creek with no paddle, no aliens to battle where we want to go. Without being pompous, we don't need map or compass. We're launching Caddy Wampus on our new travel show. Space Crew Tom, only go with us. Space Crew Tom, on our podcast bus. Space Crew Tom, we see you recognize. And in space, no one can hear you scream. Loopy from our earworm, Space Shanty. We interrupt this program to bring you the following important announcement. This is not a test or some 1930s fake radio drama based on a 19th century novel about New Jersey being invaded by a bunch of made-up incompetent aliens. We interrupt this interruption to point out that while aliens do exist, proven by the fact that we are speaking to you right now, it is the unbelievably naive, scientifically challenged aliens in that silly story that we say do not exist. I think they know that. Please, they're humans. They're not very bright. They don't know what is true and what isn't. Look at all the ridiculous things they believe. Some of them thought the aforementioned radio drama was real. Some think that carrots improve their eyesight, or that they actually use 10% of their brain. Based on what I've seen, I would guess a much lower percentage. Regardless. Or a regardless. What? So humans, regardless and irregardless, mean the same thing. Why would regardless and irregardless mean the same thing? That would be stupid. I rest my case. So let the record show that I did not call the humans stupid. Well, neither did I. You just said that the human words regardless and irregardless, meaning the same thing, is stupid. Because it is. But saying that's how they speak is stupid is not the same thing as calling humans stupid. Don't be so irritating. Can you say retating? We interrupt this argument to continue with the original interruption to this program. Please pay attention to the following announcement. I'm sorry, who's going to say it? Uh, say what? The announcement. We were going to make the announcement. So now one of us needs to make the announcement, right? Yes, I suppose so. I mean, logically. I thought Synod was going to make the announcement. Me? Well, of course I could. But I thought... Yes? I thought it might be better if Ika made the announcement. Me? Really? Yes, you've got such a lovely speaking voice. And you knew all about the regardless, irregardless thing? That's true. Look, will someone just make the announcement? I've got some errands to run. Who errands? Planetary or dimensional? Time skip, actually. France, 1792. I have booked an audience with Marie Antoinette. We're having cake. Yum. Bring me back a piece. Si vous play. Absolument. Merci, mon ami. Nobody is going anywhere until we make the announcement. You mean any time, don't you? Time skipping isn't to anywhere. Yes, all right, any time. Iker, will you please just make the announcement? Yes, of course. Can I get the trumpets again? Really? They set things up so perfectly. When I heard them before, it actually gave me chills. No. Right off my spine. But we've already done the trumpets. So? Well, I'm not sure we can do them again. I mean, legally. What do you mean, legally? Well, after what happened to the Grubbanites, I never want to see another intergalactic subpoena ever again. Oh, that was scarier than the Leapers on Planet K or Banog. Don't you think we're going to get sued for sounding so much like a Monty Python sketch? Now, that's not our fault. We're just tapping into the imaginations of the majority of the Space Crouton listeners and uh, using characters familiar to them to make our announcement. If anyone gets sued, it should be them. Just make the announcement. Uh... Trumpets, please. Fine. And now, the announcement.
<clears throat> People of Earth, we have interrupted this episode of Space Croutons to tell you what we want. We offer you another trade of our latest technology for one of Earth's most recent scientific advancements. <laughs> we, the, what are we calling ourselves? Oh, yes, brilliant. We, the aliases, are here to swap Earth, our planet's latest, Cutting edge, reality manipulation tool named at great expense by the hippest advertising agency in the universe. That's their name actually, the hippest advertising agency in the universe limited. Oh, I love them. They named the planet Uranus. Get on with it. Okay, we want to swap our new reality manipulation tool, the Varaminator. For an Earth device that has been brought to our attention just recently through conversations with some very friendly and helpful Earthling portal travelers, the left-handed bacon stretcher. Wait, that's what we voted on? A left-handed bacon stretcher? Why do we want a left-handed bacon stretcher? We don't even have left hands. That's what makes it so valuable. We would never have come up with it, not having left hands. But if we don't have left hands, how would we use it? It's stupid. Aha! Now who's calling who stupid? Well, it is. We don't need some tool we could never use. What about a right-handed bacon stretcher? Oh, that's no good. No? Well, reasoning it out, we would have to assume that if we have no left hands, then it would be highly unlikely that we would have right hands either. Follow me? Oh, yes. Now it makes sense. What about an ambidextrous bacon stretcher? Oh, I don't know. I've never heard of ambidextrous bacon. Right. We'll just have to go back to our list of all of those great technological wonders and pick something else. And until we choose another item off that list, you Earthlings should just forget we even mentioned the Varaminator, or how we described it as a reality manipulation tool. And how you could try to use it to reverse all the mistakes you humans have made regarding your worlds, up to and including, oh, I don't know, eternity. Nay, Herb. It's nay on turn to EA. We have not mentioned that yet. Oh, right. So, now you Earthlings should just forget we mentioned that too. Sorry, guys. You're such a jack alias. So we now return you to your regularly scheduled Space Croutons podcast, already in progress. Neub, roll the die. I'm flipping the middle one. See if that does anything. Curdy, the bridge has been lowered. The pothole has been filled. The gap has been minded. What? Our connection has been restored. We are podcasting once again. Well, why didn't you say so? That's great, Sally. Thanks for your perseverance and tech savviness. Hello, Space Croutons Travel Scouts. I apologize for whatever happened to interrupt the show way back at the very beginning. We were playing the theme and getting ready to greet you like always, and then we just lost the signal. It's like my dad used to say, technology, it makes your life easier except when it doesn't. Kind of like having you for a son. You make my life easier except, well, you fill in the rest. Then go get me another corn muffin. Go on, make my life easier for a change. Well, we've had to spend the intervening time working to come back to you, and finally here we are, just in time to say goodbye again. Before signing off, I suggest we weed the garden, board the gravy train, take the quarter and call someone who cares. What on earth are you saying? I am attempting to use creative human idioms to say that before we end the podcast. We should play the commercial from today's sponsor. Oh, now I get it, Sally. 
Why, sure thing. Let's butter those biscuits, launch that rocket, and get that marching band into formation. What? Just play the commercial, Sally. We've got a grand proposal. What if now, just suppose that you could be rid of garbage for all time? With our brand new trash portal, you'll feel like an immortal as your waste disappears when placed inside. You'll treat with antimatter, which causes it to scatter in a black hole deeper than the world is wide. The universe stays clean and the environment's redeemed because Burfsford's garbage disposal turned the tide. So now all our trash is a thing of the past. Use Burfsford's garbage disposal every time. I must say, that Bestford with a silent T sure is staying busy. And thanks again for sponsoring the show. He is a real cow tipping, pancake flipping, shoelace stripping, do drop dripping sure enough son of a gun, isn't he Cordy? If you say so yourself, Sally. And to our audience, thanks for sticking around while we figure out what was what and pump the air back into the show today. Remember to stay strong and keep peace in your heart until our next story time. We're back in the saddle up the creek with no paddle. No aliens to battle where we want to go. Without being pompous, we don't need map or compass. We're launching Caddy Wampus on our new travel show. Space Crew Tom, only go with us. Space Crew Tom, on our podcast bus. Space Crew Tom, we see your readiness. We interrupt this closing theme to clarify our previous clarification regarding the advice we gave pertaining to the other advisory about forgetting the verambinator, in case you have not already forgotten. If you have forgotten already, well, then it goes without saying that I did not need to say this, and you may disregard this interruption just as you have disregarded all previous interruptions. Now, back to your closing theme. Oh, and the credits. I mean, don't forget the credits. I mean, they work so hard, don't they? And they deserve the glory. And in space, no one can hear you scream. Loopy from our earworms, space shanty theme. is a work of original fiction. Similarities to persons, situations, or events, real or fictional, is coincidental and unintentional. Created and written by Jerry, Jace, John, Della, and Jeff Goodson. Episode story by Jeff. 
Original music and production by Jeff, Della, Jerry, and John. Featuring the voice talents of Della, John, Jerry, Barry Shea, Jeff, and Sally. Entire work copyright 2021 by Jeff, John, Jerry, Della, and Jace Goodson. This has been a Good Witch Audio Production.